Hello, I'm Gustavo, and this is Stories of Cinema. Have you ever watched a silent film before? The most probable answer is no, and that's okay. We're living in the 21st century where everything is colorful and fast and given to us in silver spoon. And again, that's okay. But in my case, due to the current situation, I wanted to explore a little more on films I will otherwise not even think about. And as reluctant as I was, I played a silent film for the first time. I didn't know what to expect. It doesn't matter what you think if you haven't watched any, so to have a say in this matter, I watched it. The first silent film I ever saw was Carl Theodore Dreyer's The Passion of Joan of Arc, released in 1928, a French film that was reportedly lost for as many as 50 years. 50 years! But as the tagline clearly states, this film is an immortal screen classic that will live forever. When director Carl Theodore Dreyer completed the original cut of the film, he was informed that the entire master print had been accidentally destroyed. Before its French premiere, several cuts were made by religious and government censors. But later that year, a fire at UFA Studios in Berlin destroyed the film's original negative. He couldn't reshoot the movie, obviously, so he re-edited the entire film from footage he originally rejected. But then, that version was burned again in the lab fire in 1929. Later in 1981, an employee in a mental institution in Oslo found the film in a janitor's closet, and later sent it to the Norwegian Film Institute, where it was stored for three years until it was finally examined, and it was discovered that that same film was Dyer's original cut prior to the government and church censorship. So, according to my research, the film I saw and the film most of you will see is the original version, but I can be wrong. Now, let's talk about the movie itself. First and foremost, Maria Falconetti. That's it, that's the video. The film shows the story of the real trials of Joan of Arc, played by Maria Falconetti, on trial for claiming she had spoken to God, therefore going through inhuman treatment, pressured by church court officials, almost making her change her story, but eventually decides to stay with the truth something that will get her a severe punishment, a very famous real execution that made her a martyr, but took away her long life ahead. As you may know already, I particularly love Maria Falconetti in this film, and I think it may be the best female performance on screen in history, or at least, the best one I've seen. Her facial expressions tell us everything about her emotions, about her fears, but also her determination and bravery. It may look weird to some people because many of her scenes in the first half appear to be very similar. And when I say similar, I mean very similar. Because she does this thing with her eyes where she opens them wide enough to make them stand out with a certain glow. Look, imagine this scene. You've been sitting in darkness for quite a long time. And then, a door is opened. And you see a majestic glow that makes you open your eyes big enough to appreciate the glow. Now that's what I think when I see Falconetti's eyes in this film. And don't get me wrong, even when those scenes appear to be similar, that doesn't mean she didn't do a great job. She is perfect in this film. Throughout the movie, the camera is focusing straight on Joan of Arc's face. Most of the shots from the other characters are close-ups too, and they're fascinating. But when you think of it, it is weird because much of the film's budget was reserved to very expensive sets, which are almost not seen at all. The cinematography is suffocating, making the spectator feel the pressure of being on trial just as if they were young herself. Rudolf Maté, the cinematographer, even dug holes in the set to achieve the low camera angles that appear especially to the end. That's an incredible work of cinematography. The first hour of the film keeps you at the edge of your seat at all times, and the last 20 minutes are something totally different, but remember it's strong. It doesn't matter which score you choose to watch it with, because all the emotion is given to the visuals that Dreyer delivered, along with cinematographer Rudolf Matei, that made us feel the pressure upon Joan's shoulders. Each and every second in this film is indispensable, and makes you ask yourself how come a movie can be this perfect, and how does it maintain you food for all the entire film? It is mesmerizing, passionate, tough, rough at times, desperate, you feel lonely, desolate, and by the end of it you will not cry, you will not laugh, you will get mad and want to change people's minds and go back in time and tell the bishop and the judges to accept different ideas. 
I was very surprised on how much I was hooked to this movie, mainly because I was just introducing myself to silent films. Apart from all the controversy the film is involved in, it is a true work of art, having one of the best performances in film, an intriguing cinematography, a very interesting trial, and it can easily be considered in any top 10 list of best films in history. Now, taking a very drastic turn, let's talk about Charlie Chaplin's masterpiece, Modern Times. Who hasn't heard about Chaplin, the funny English actor and director who always wore a tiny mustache in his movies? You may have even seen him at school. This guy was very multifaceted and could do anything on the big screen, and what a creative mind he was. One of the masters of physical comedy, one of the greatest comedic actors to live on earth, but also one of the greatest filmmakers in the history of cinema. He is really one to thank for his efforts in making cinema the great form of art it is today. Now, off and go to the film. Modern Times was released in 1936, Chaplin's last silent film, though some people actually speak and there are several sound effects, but still silent. And it follows the madness of the tramp as he struggles to go through life during the modern industrial times that dominate society. Since the first moment this guy is making you laugh, he's incredible. He then becomes a test subject for a film machine that was supposedly going to lower break times and enhance production. But as we can see, that only makes it worse. He starts doing insanities in the fabric, running from the police and then taken to a mental hospital. In this movie he looks for work, goes to Yale, gets out, tries to go again, meets the love of his life, goes to work and ends up with her love at the end of the day. Such a beautiful movie. Chaplin is incessantly funny from his expressions and gestures to his body movements. He is but a masterful actor. I could talk about many great scenes. The fitting scene, the one where he got stuck in the production line, when the table breaks at his home, the last dance, and of course, the roller skating scene. You can't stop laughing, at all. I love it so much and it's a comedy everyone should watch, doesn't matter how old you are. This film has also a lot of heart making an emphasis in the very last scene, when the tramp reminds his girl to smile. It doesn't matter how hard life hits you, it doesn't matter how you're living, you have to always remember to smile and enjoy life. And if you happen to meet someone that completes you, just like the tramp did, even better. But now, who is she? Who is his love? Paulette Goddard is a gamin, someone from the streets, just as the tramp is. She brings balance to the little tramp's life. All the adventures she went through made her very happy. And even when it was risky to, for example, be in a mall at night, it was worth it, because she was enjoying her life, just as he did. Everything in this movie is amazing. Just, if you haven't watched it, grab someone you love and sit to watch this masterpiece. This includes today's video about two of the most influential silent films from very important people from the cinematic industry. I admire what these two films have achieved and their influence to today's film industry. We will never watch something like this, and I don't complain. Their value is even greater, and each era has its own masterpieces. And the silent film era had this. A rough drama from 1928, and a funny comedy from 1936. Perfection. If you liked this video, or you have any suggestion, I would love if you comment down below, or tell me in any of my social media. You can follow me on Twitter at Stories of Cinema, on Instagram at Stories of Cinema 1, and on Letterbox at Gustavo Ramos 01. I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, thank you for watching.